are again another Saturday and we are going out to our remote project cave here in Tennessee. We've got the four wheelers ready to go waiting on Harold and Cindy. They're actually pulling up right now. We're going to ride out to the cave. I'm not going to do too much footage on the way out there because my previous videos I've shown all of that. It's about a five mile four wheeler ride out to this cave. Um, we're riding all the way to the cave. We've cleared the trail enough where we can do that so it'll make it a little bit easier on us. Um, but come along with us as we go and pick up the survey in this cave. We've got the notes here. Maybe Jason will show us some of those here in a minute. And we're going to pick up the survey down in the bottom of the cave and um, see how far we can get today. It's probably going to be a long day. So if you like my content, please like and subscribe for more for outdoor recreation here in the heart of TAG, which is short for Tennessee, Alabama, and Georgia. Five, four... So this is where we're going in the cave to pick up the survey today. I do remember this cave being pretty nice. Jason even noticed, noted here very nice draperies. So we'll see what those look like in the cave today. So last Sunday we came out here and did a little bit of trail maintenance on this area so we could get all the way to the cave. So just to show you how close we're able to get to the cave now, we're expecting to have a really long trip today. We're going back to the furthest area that's known in this cave to pick up the survey. And there she is, blowing out some nice warm air. This is the uh, save, save a beaner rig. Figure eight follow through. Jason has the pit rigged and he is getting ready to go down. He's going to start climbing the other pit when he gets to the bottom and we're going to keep moving through the crack and we'll catch up with everybody down there. So Jason and I have made it all the way down to the bottom of the fourth drop. We're going to climb down that, that and go that way to the rest of the cave to our survey objective. We're just waiting on Harold and Cindy to get down here now. We have packed our vertical gear in our packs because where we're going in this cave, there's actually another pit. And just kind of stem across it. So we haven't been in this passage in... Nine years. It does seem like we'll get long shots. Like decently, decent uh, distance shots. Big canyon passage. Wow, there's a, that must be a station way up there. There's Where? flat flagging. Yeah. Where? Right, right there. there. Unless that was like a mark for a lead. Did you do that, Harold? No, I think what we do. Yeah, I think. You, know, you can do it just about anywhere. So we got a chimney up to the next level. Back up. Right. The way Harold's going is the way we got to go. Right. You want to go first, Cindy? I guess so. Might as well. You can do it right here, too. It's easier. Okay. You can do it right here. This isn't, right there, this isn't too there. bad right here. All right. Yeah, I remember this being very pretty. Look at all these formations. So we climbed up from down there, and we're just chimneying through this canyon. It's 
like a little rabbit hole down there. You can see we're still in this canyon passage. Lots of chimneying in this cave. Lots of exposure. Three points of contact always. This is a really beautiful area here. We're gonna have to climb up there. Again, lots of climbing up and down in this cave. Wow, that's really cool. That really long soda shawl right there. We gotta be careful for that. There's that really long soda shawl. So we've got this climb down here that we've gotta go down. We left this roped rig here when we were doing the survey. It's a flow stone, it's kind of slick. So we've just got to gotcha. spot everybody. <sighs> all right, I guess I'm going down next. So that is what we all just came down, and now Cindy is coming down it. It's all flow stone, so it's pretty slick. So this is a really pretty flowstone formation. It's probably about five foot tall. And then right here behind me, there's a bat, a little brown bat. We don't want to disturb him. Okay, that's it right back there. So we are at our destination for the day where we're going to pick up our survey down here in the bottom of this cave. We're going to see how much we can finish. We actually want to finish this passage down here so we don't ever have to come back. So this is our last survey station from September 6, 2014, and I just did the first station, and Jason is writing down the numbers, and then he's going to start sketching this passage, because what we're doing here today is we are creating a map of this cave. So this is what's called the BRIC, B-R-I-C. This is our survey instrument that we're using. It's all digital. It takes our distance readings, our compass, and our inclination readings. So you can see it has a laser on it. And we put the laser on the station and then shoot for the next shot. So let's get that set up here. So let's see. Let's see. So we put this yeah, on our on, survey station. Put it on the left wall and show me where it's at. Okay. okay. Or I can go top. Okay, hold on. Or we can go. Oh yeah, keep going. Somewhere back over there. Yeah, right there. I'll get. I'll... Okay, you go get over there, and then we'll get that shot set up for Jason. Steady. Cindy's got the station. And I'm going to shoot that laser. I've already got it, actually, Cindy. I'll do it again just to check it. But 
I got the back of my hand on it. There. You get it? Should I move to that? I got it. Same exact numbers. So we're going to read these numbers off to Jason in just a moment. 21.5 feet, 175.4, negative 5.6. And then Cindy can tell you where it's at. Left is two and a half feet. Okay. Right is three and a half feet. Up is, well, I don't, 10 inches, not a foot. Down is two feet. <laughs> Yep, yep, you're fine. So that bag Jason's carrying there, that's his survey bag. He's got all of his notes in it. So Jason is just on the other side of that flow stone there where our other survey station is. Now this part of the cave, probably less than five or six people in the world have ever been in this section of the cave. We're down here in the bottom of this cave, um, finishing up this survey. So we use whiteout to set our stations, and this little dot right here is our station. So we shoot points from station to station to station, getting the measurements of the cave. So Cindy has already gone all the way down there, right there, where she has set another station, and I shot our instrument. And so this one's actually a pretty good distance, 68.7 feet. So when Jason's ready for that number, I'm going to call it out to him in a moment, and he's going to jot it down. And then as he comes from behind me, we're also giving him the measurements from left and right, up and down. So what he is doing is drawing this cave passage on his paper as we give him all of this data. And then he can take all of this data and put it into a working map. Where did I come out at? You came out right down under there. Cindy and I crawled under that. So as you can see here, Jason's sketches. So Jason is over there busy sketching in all of this passage onto his map. Okay. All right, so your next numbers are 68.7 feet, okay. 195.0, and our inclination is negative 0.4. So I just found these little bones in the cave. Now, that's probably from some type of rat. Those look like they could be from a bat. And then if you come over here, there's the actual skull, which probably is a little... So where these bones are, there's actually a really tall dome up there. And I just shot um, a laser up there for distance and it's 70 feet and then there's a crack. So I just noticed there are little bones everywhere at the bottom of this little dome pit. Looks like more rat bones. There's even some more bones. So here we are in the bottom of this cave, surveying this passage, making a map. So Cindy is crawling ahead to set the next station. We're going to give her a laser down that direction. See the laser here? Okay. Yeah, it's like 75 feet up there. <laughs> 
71.6 feet, 188.5, negative 1.9. You want L rods? Left is zero slash 12. Put your head there, Cindy. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to shine you in the face. Right is 8.5. Up is 0 0.8. Down, 4.6. So Cindy just spotted a cave salamander. We'll show him to you right here. So that is what is known as a cave salamander. Here's some really cool coral fossils. It's a coral colony. really cool from when this was all underwater and was an ocean and all that was deposited here in the limestone so there is our station right there the little speck of white out Cindy's gonna go down there we're gonna shoot the next shot get the measurements and give them to Jason so he can sketch this passage in Check out that beautiful um, drapery right there, that flow stone, and then the draperies that come down from up there. That is absolutely gorgeous. Really nice. Jason trying to keep his feet dry. And the inclination was negative five. Your left is zero slash two. Left is zero. So again, all of this cave had never been seen by anyone else on earth until we discovered it nine years ago. Can you show me what you sketched so far? So, wow, okay, wow, look at the domes, tri triple domes. Cool. Yeah. Oh, wow, we've done quite a bit so far. So, Jason's taking all of the measurements that were given him, and he's drawing all of this on the paper. He'll put all of that in the computer and digitally draft the map. Yeah. There. So, Jason is back there at the last station that I was just at, and we shot the laser all the way down to the little dot right there. It was about 76 feet. And so now he is drafting in everything between that station and this station. So he's drawing the map, sketching in the walls, drawing in the water features and any other features or formations in the cave. He's drawing that on his map as he makes his way from station to station. So as we move through the cave, we're collecting the data, the total length and the total vertical extent of the cave. So at the end of the survey, we'll know exactly how long this cave is in feet and how deep it is from the surface to the lowest part in the cave. So Cindy is marking our next station there. We got a short shot. We had to go from that station to that one. Did you give me the distance? Nope. Are you ready for it? You 
thought this was pretty cool. Little bunny ears formation right there. The stream passage down here. Maybe less less than twenty feet, something that falls in the room that's down there. What's well, through the hearts over there? Where I'm looking through and looking through. So we're gonna make us some lunch here today. I definitely have a We're going to get some water boiling here, and we're going to make us an adventure meal. <laughs> Is this one you gave us, Cindy? Yeah. Awesome. Oh my gosh, this smells so good. Let's get this stirred up and then we'll get it closed up. Making some hot chocolate. Some hot coke cocoa. So my friend Randy recently went to Japan to visit her son and his wife and her new grandbaby. And she brought us back some candy. <laughs> so I'm thinking it kind of looks maybe like a Snickers bar. So we're going to open this in a minute and we'll try it and see what we think. Mm -hmm. I, have Asian I, I can't read that. So, hey, if you're watching this video and you can read this and tell me what the name of this bar is, comment below. You, smell. you smell beef stew. Lagania. Yeah. It's 12 yeah. ounces, Cindy? Uh, yes. All right, get this water boiling for Cindy's lasagna that she's got going. Go. Yeah. Hot. I'm going to share it with you, Cindy. Don't okay. worry. We're going to see what this Japanese um, little bar looks like. Cindy's telling me it's got crickets in it. I, I can't read it to tell me the ingredients that it, that it does or doesn't have crickets in it. So, let's see. Okay, let's see. Well, it smells like chocolate. I, I don't see anything that looks like a cricket leg. Just take it. Is it fudge? Like a fudge? Mm, it's like it's bar. like a bar. It's like there's layers. Almost like a chocolate covered Oreo. Mm. You want to taste it? Mm. That sounds kind of good. Yes. No. Mm. It's like a chocolate covered Oreo. Here, Cindy. Are, yes. Take a bite and then give Harold the, a bite. There's two bites for y'all. It kind of tastes like um, I don't know. It's got like a wafer in it, like a wafer bar. So it's kind of like graham cracker. Like a graham cracker, yeah. Like, like some kind of bar cracker. with chocolate. Good. Yeah, I definitely don't think it's crickets. Mm -mm. But if you know what kind of bar this Harold is, comment below and, and tell me what it what it's called. Ooh, Curious. Good. Thank you, Randy. That was really good. Yeah, Randy. Nice little break thinking of you in the cave. <laughs> so this is really neat. This is an old big piece of uh, flowstone, like a bell formation, that has started to erode away. Let me know when you're ready for numbers. I'm ready for numbers. Okay, we've got 8.3 feet. 2. Point, I'm sorry, 244.9 and negative 0. 0.3. 
My left is zero. My right. Oh, yeah, I see. It. Yeah. Water gets pretty high in here. I can get up to here. Actually, there's another water line on your left. Oh, yeah. Yep, you can see this water line on the wall here. So this passage almost completely floods when the water's high. Yeah. So I just came up out of that water passage down there. We shot a station from the point right there all the way to this point right here. And then look at this really beautiful flowstone formation right here. This is all formed by water seeping through the ground through the limestone and then it picks up calcite as it comes through the limestone and deposits it here in the cave creating these beautiful formations. Yeah, I know the green color yeah. in the rock, you can yeah. you can see it. So Jason's talking about the layers in the limestone here. We're actually breaking through a different layer that's called the Hartzell formation, which is what we want to do because it's going to make our cave our, our cave go deeper. Uh, yeah. So we popped up into this room full of all of this breakdown. Yeah, just, yeah, this is, this. Some pretty this big pieces spot. of breakdown here. We can hear the water in the distance where it's going over a, a climb down. So where are we going to shoot the shot? Okay, so right here I'm standing at the top of the little kind of climb down thing. Okay, so we're going to shoot the shot. So you got to get, uh, get it to here. We're going to label the one where Cindy's yeah. at. Flat ceiling. Okay. Let's go there. So I climbed up. Yeah, I got it. Came up to the top of this breakdown room. Now we got a breakdown climb down. There's our station right there. Again, we're using whiteout, which is removable. It's not permanent in the cave. You can wipe that off at any time so it doesn't harm the cave. Got it? Mm -hmm. So this is not the same stream that we've been coming in. This is a different stream coming into our cave here. So that's kind of interesting. And then there's a, a stream coming off of a ledge, but it's coming from this way. There's a stream and then it's dropped off a ledge. Like, how's there a stream above us coming this way? It's, it's is it that that water that's coming down and in here? There's a there's a higher dome pit, which part of the water is coming dripping down, and then there's also a stream coming off of a ledge. How big's the dome? How tall? Seventy. Okay. Another one of those seventy foot domes. We need to survey that. Let's get all the, can we survey all the way down to that level? Okay. What? Below that 50 feet? Yeah, we're going down. We're climbing down. So we got to go that point from there. Another dome down there that's not related to this, I don't think. So that's the formation that we want our cave to break through for it to keep going deeper. And it's definitely breaking through, so we're pretty excited. Our wonderful sketcher sitting up there drawing this cave. So again, this stream is not the main stream that we've been following in the cave. We've intersected this stream, or should I say it's intersected this cave. And then you can see down here, that goes down about 40 feet down in that black hole down there. Harold and Cindy are climbing down there so we can get a shot set up and shoot us um, shoot the laser down there for some measurements.
so we found another waterfall. This, we believe, is where our main stream is dropping down into this lower level. So look at these layers of limestone. Thirteen point seven. Yeah. Add this one oh three point four. Inclination minus fifty four point two. So that water that I showed you coming off of the ledge up top. Mark it. That's where it's all coming down okay. right here. Four, I'll do it in my right. Right is seven. Okay. Up is ten. Thirty something. Almost 30, forty. Five point four. Down was fourteen. So the cave is continuing down, which is a good thing for us. We're breaking through the different layers of limestone. Harold is over there following the air. So when we give Jason the numbers, he's using this compass right here in his hand to make these drawings. So we give him our compass reading and then he's able to turn this little knob and line it up on his paper so he draws the cave passage accurately. So all of those little lines you see, those are all of the shots that we gave him and all of the measurements, and then he draws in everything from that. Yeah, it breaks off when you touch it. Yeah. So we are calling the survey for the day, and we're going to start making our way out of this cave. We've accomplished a few things we wanted to do, and there's still more questions, so we'll still have to come back another time. Drink it right now, straight out of it. So Jason is down there filtering some water so we can have enough water to comfortably get out of the cave. Heck yeah. Nice, cold, filtered cave water. So we've made our way all the way back to the bottom of the last pit that we came down. And we are all getting our gear so we can get out of this cave. Nine, like the wind. Oh. No, I'm waiting on Harold to find like the wind. Mm -hmm. I wait. So I just climbed up those ropes and I'm in this little window about 50 feet off the floor. Harold's over there climbing the main pit all the way up to there. And I'm going to get on this rope next and go down. So 
So Jason just finished climbing out and now Cindy's gonna climb and then I will be down here by myself and I'll go last. So everybody's out of the cave. We got on some dry clothes and now we're gonna start our way back to the vehicle. So end of day for us. It's about 10 o'clock at night. Got about an hour ride back to our vehicles. Back to the vehicles it was quite a long day on the ridge today over 12 hours my feet are freezing it's in the 30s outside so we just loaded up the four wheelers we're gonna head back home if you like my content please like and subscribe for more caving and outdoor recreation here in the heart of tag which is short for Tennessee Alabama and Georgia when we get home I'm gonna have Jason pull out some survey notes and we'll show you what all we surveyed today in the cave and hopefully that'll make a little bit more sense for you when we can show it to you on paper what we're actually doing in the cave and how we're creating the map of this cave. This is the profile view, that's the entrance pit. So all of the cave, again, that is beyond the entrance, all of this cave that you're seeing in this working map here, this is all cave that we found, never before seen by anyone else. Uh, we know this for fact, cavers call it Virgin Cave, and we have surveyed over 3,000 feet of Virgin Cave in this cave to date. So we've laid out the notes from yesterday just to show you a little bit more in detail because it's kind of hard to see in the cave and through Jason's hand when he's drafting. So this is the cave passage, and this is all of the data. We, this is the running profile. Yep, and this is the plan view. So when we give him the numbers, he jots it all down, which is on the back of these pages. And so you can see station to station to station to station. So as we were calling out those numbers, we were giving him those distance and the inclination as, long as, as well as the uh, compass readings. And then he was taking all of that down and then drawing this map as we progressed the survey through the cave. This was that really cool area where the three domes that were about 75 feet tall. Okay, so then he even notes things here like 15 foot nice drapery. And then continuing on. And then this was the, the room, the waterfall room with the twin waterfalls. Um, well, we'll pick this back up next time. And then all of this is taken to a computer, and then these notes are scanned in, and then he digitally drafts the map, so I'll show you that next. So we take the notes that I showed you a moment ago, and Jason imports them into this computer program, and then he's able to draw over it the map. So all of it's taken in the cave on paper and then it's converted to the computer into a digital map.